This is YNS, the YouTube News Service. Good evening, I'm down with Gary, our top stories today. A helicopter carrying a powerful politician from southern India disappeared in bad weather on Wednesday as it was flying over a forested region infested with Maoist rebels. Air Force helicopters rushed to the area to search for the aircraft, carrying YS Rajeshikaravedi, the 60-year-old Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh State. The Kaushaya, the State Finance Minister, spoke to reporters on Wednesday afternoon about six hours into the search and said authorities had very few clues. Lama Camp Medi, another top state government official, said our helicopters are still searching. The, the missing helicopter may have landed in an unfamiliar forest area from where it is difficult to get out. The helicopter took off from Hyderabad, the state capital, and lost contact with air traffic controllers about 45 minutes into the flight. Roshaya said, that at the time, the helicopters were believed to be about 275 kilometers south of the capital. The rebels, who say they are inspired by Chinese revolutionary leader Mao Zedong, have been fighting for more than three decades in several Indian states, demanding land and jobs for agricultural laborers, laborers, and laborers, and the poor. Sorry. I'm sorry. While the militants have a great deal of power in parts of rural India, including Andhra Pradesh, they have little day-to-day -day control outside of the isolated forests and villages. More than 6,500 people, yeah, 6, people sorry, have been killed in the violence. <coughs> and uh, other top stories today. Colombia's lower house has approved a bill calling for a referendum on whether to change the constitution to allow President Alvaro Uribe to run for a third term. Lawmakers have voted 85 to 5, with 76 abstentions in favour of the referendum. The bill, which has already passed the Senate, must now go to Colombia's Constitutional Court. The referendum would ask voters if Colombia should modify its constitution to allow presidents to run for two consecutive re-elections. The constitution, which was already modified once to let Uruguay run for a second four-year term, allows for a single immediate re-election. Uruguay has not yet said publicly if he will run again. The Chamber of Representatives Secretariat announced the result early Wednesday. Israel's foreign minister is starting, to, starting a visit to sub-Saharan Africa for the first time in more than 20 years, rekindling the African ties. Avigdor Lieberman begins his trip in Ethiopia, where he will be accompanied by 20 business people. Officials say the trip is about building business links with Africa and also countering the influence of Iran on the continent. Israel hopes closer ties with Africa will help at the UN where African countries often vote in blocks. Ethiopia has strong links with Israel. During the 1980s and 90s, tens of thousands of Ethiopian Jews were airlifted to Israel to resettle in what they considered to be their homeland. Mr. Liebman will also visit Uganda, which recently turned to Iran for help in exploiting its newly discovered oil. Kenya, which has which his spokesman described as an African power broker, is also on Mr. Lieberman's itinerary. Also, on a slightly lighter note, walkers have outdone themselves again. They've come out with a new crisp flavour designed to help diets. It is, uh, it is rumoured that the crisps are sperm flavoured and they are being sold as diet crisps because apparently 
eight to seven percent of women will spit them back out again. And our British top story today, Gordon Brown denies claims of double dealing over the matter of releasing Al Bassett Al Magrahi. Gordon Brown today sought to defuse the row about his role in the release of the man accused of the Lockerbie bombing, saying that he respected the decision taken by Edinburgh and that there was no double dealing by the British government. The Prime Minister, who has been strongly criticised for failing to say whether or not he supported the decision, said he respects the right of the Scottish ministers to make the decision, and he respects the decision. In brief remarks before the launch of a youth employment initiative, Brown also strongly denied Tory claims that he was involved with double dealing over the release of Magali. But David Cameron responded almost immediately by repeating the accusation. The Conservative leader said that the ministers were telling the Libyans in private that they did not want Magrahi to die in prison, while telling the British public that they could not express an opinion on the matter because it was up to the Scottish Government to decide the fate of Magrahi. And now a quick look at the weather. The weather around Britain was quite different today. We had sun in most regions of Scotland and moving into northern England with temperatures of about 30. In Wales, we had sunny spells and slight rain. And as we move across into uh, London and the other southern regions, we had slight rain with sunny intervals. This band of high pressure will meet this band of low pressure and mix sort of around this area, around sort of Lincolnshire, and create some really bad storms towards the end of the weekend. And that's all we have today. Tune in for another service soon. This was YNS. Good evening.